What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech. In today's video I'm going to test a 16GB RX 9060 XT and put it up against a similar priced 8GB card from Nvidia. We're doing time travel. My first game on my list is Battlefield 6, testing at a native 1440p resolution with high settings on an RX 9060 XT. I managed to maintain an average FPS of 92 and a 1% low stayed above 60fps. The RTX 5060 on the other hand actually performed pretty bad given the price difference and maintained an average FPS of only 75. 1% lows couldn't keep above 60 FPS in my tests either. Already one game into my testing and it seems the extra $60 gets you a nice bump in performance but what about a more grounded game? The Last of Us Part 2 has no ray tracing features but it still likes to use a lot of VRAM. The game has an efficient asset streaming system that dynamically adjusts the size of your VRAM buffer to fit the available memory on your graphics card, hence why VRAM usage is higher on the 9060 XT. The game's engine adjusts the size of the texture buffer on the fly to fit within the limits of your GPU's memory, but still my tests found the FPS between the two cards significant, most notably are the 1% lows on the RTX. 5060. The next game I compared is Cyberpunk 2077, again at native 1440p with a mixture of medium and high settings, the RTX 5060 maintained an average of 84 FPS, the 9060 XT interestingly only performed ever so slightly better, but with this performance adding FSR or frame gen into the mix would allow you to turn on some ray tracing features since there's still plenty of VRAM left with these GPU settings unlike the RTX 5060 which is nearing its limit. Limits. Doom the Dark Ages has ray tracing effects built into the engine and there's no way to turn them off. This will be an interesting test for both cards. At 1440p native with high settings I'm already at the limit of the 5060's VRAM capacity. Upping the settings any further completely breaks the experience and it can also cause system crashes. The average FPS is unplayable in my opinion plus the 1% lows are really taking a battering. The 9060 XT on the other hand feels smoother and the 1% lows are way higher. So even without the highest settings on Doom the Dark Ages, at 1440p an 8GB card struggles. I have a 16GB RTX 5060 Ti coming and I will retest all of these games in another video. Checking out Indiana Jones for a second, I decided to cut the 5060 some slack. Even at 4K with low settings, DLSS and frame generation, high frame rates are possible, but just look at that VRAM usage. This is really pushing the RTX 5060 to its limit, but the game felt really smooth even at 4K with the right optimised settings. The 9060 XT was notably smoother at 1440p and 4K, and I can't wait to test the 5060 Ti next week. That's probably going to be the card to buy over both of these for 1440p gaming, the sweet spot maybe, although it's a fair bit more expensive. On Marvel Rivals, both cards are neck and neck when you're inside, although interestingly the 5060 pulls slightly ahead when roaming outside, showing that even though the 9060 XT is slightly more powerful, drivers still play a big part in how well a card performs. In Alan Wake 2, the 9060 XT pulls ahead again. The performance I'm seeing from the 9060 XT is in line with its asking price. It's no coincidence AMD have priced the card right in between an RTX 5060 and a 5060 Ti. Please note this video is aimed directly to expose the flaws of any card with 8GB of VRAM, but the 5060 here is still performing fairly well, as the game engine manages VRAM allocation dynamically. Checking out the performance on some of the most popular eSport titles, you'll notice both cards can deliver crazy high frame rates even at 1440p as these titles require very little VRAM. In games like CSGO 2, Fortnite, Apex Legends, you'll have no trouble getting frame rates into the hundreds. One could definitely argue that both of these GPUs are aimed towards eSport gamers playing at a lower resolution. In this instance, both cards are more than capable and deliver extremely high frame rates. Most competitive Competitive gamers will run low settings regardless of the GPU they have installed in their system, so a cheaper 8GB card could potentially be a better choice as money saved could go towards a better CPU or higher speed DDR5. Right everyone, the benchmarks are coming up now and I will use settings catered towards the 8GB card otherwise while testing the 5060 will just become unstable in games like Cyberpunk, Indiana Jones and Alan Wake 2 for example and I can easily crash this 5060 by selecting settings that will require more than 8GB of VRAM. 
The 16 gigabytes of VRAM in this RX 9060 XT allows the GPU to just keep on going like a Duracell battery. I can load so much more onto this card. Sure at native 1440p with ultra settings, frame rates on the RX 9060 XT will be low, but that's much better than a whole system crash. Plus AMD still have FSR and frame gen to make 30 FPS potentially feel much smoother. As for ray tracing, the 8GB of VRAM on this RTX 5060 makes any Nvidia advantages in photorealistic lighting or shadows obsolete because it can't run it. 50 series, it is essentially a supercomputer that you put into your PC. So it's time to now check out the benchmarks. I did some in 1440p high settings and also some in 1080p as well. Let's go. So the performance of the 9060 XT has been impressive, at 1080p the RTX 5060 closes the gap left wide open at 1440p high settings, but there's no doubt that its VRAM capacity is seriously letting it down. All of these issues would of course plague the 8GB version of this RX 9060 XT as well. If we take a look at Firestrike Ultra for a second, it gives me a score of 9288 on the 5060 and 9865 on the 9060 XT, and there's a 10 FPS difference in 3 d Mark's estimated game performance tab. In Steel Nomad, the final scores are even closer, but 3 d Mark's estimated game performance still shows a 10 FPS difference. The graphics scores, there's barely 3% difference between them, just shows while in real games how much that extra VRAM is helping out at higher resolutions. Now I'm going to do a noise test to compare the cards, both of them under full load. you <laughs> 
So everyone, this video seems like a bit of a hit piece on the 5060, and it's definitely not. Any card with VRAM as low as this is a bad choice for 1440p gaming with high settings or above in AAA titles. I made another video testing it at 1080p and it performed really well. Can't wait to try the 5060 Ti to see how that compares and I will test that in another video coming up really soon. Well that's it for today's video, cheers for watching everyone, my name's Mark from Silence Tech. Goodbye.